Beautiful, tough, and wild. Words that we use to describe Lisa. It, <laughs> but actually, this time we're talking about the horses and the ponies that are on Nasty Island. Man, wild. The more than 100 horses are considered wild and resourceful. They could use our help. Delmarva Life's Brian Spiros joins us from Assateeg. And I know you've seen some of the horses. How can we help them? Well, Lisa and Jimmy, when we were coming in here earlier, we saw several of them grazing on the side of the road doing their thing. You know, there's about 114 horses on the Maryland side of the island, plenty more on the Virginia side. And people may not even realize this, but you can actually become a foster parent to one of these horses. And I'm joined now by Carl Zimmerman, who is the management assistant. And Carl, first thing, you guys have actually had some recent additions here to the island. Tell us about them. That's right, Brian. Uh, we've had two new foals join the herd over the past month. Uh, both are fillies. Uh, the one's a solid bay, and the other's a pretty little brown and white pinto. And they're the only foals we're expecting this year. The only two, when they've arrived. That's right, they're here. And they actually joined five other foals that were born, uh, born last year, joined five other foals. Their names are Giggles, Charmed, Dewey, Pretty Lass, and, and Shasta. Some interesting names there, to say the least. Uh, absolutely. And those names come from the fact that we allow folks the opportunity to go ahead and name our young foals every year. Um, these horses are actually split into herds. Explain to me, explain to me a little bit about how the horses are uh, split into herds. Sure, that's right. There's actually two herds of horses on Astig Island. Uh, one lives in Virginia, and those are the horses that get rounded up every year and make the swim from Astig to Chincoteague, uh, where the young of the year are auctioned off. Uh, the second herd lives just in Maryland. They're separated by a fence at the state line, and those are the horses that are managed and owned by the National Park Service, and that's the herd that these two youngsters just joined. You know, when we were coming in here um, today, the horses right along the side of the road, people probably want to go up to them, they want to feed them, touch them, but if people should have caution when they're around the, the horses. Explain. That's right. Well, you know, the horses that live in the, in the area where most of the folks that visit ST come to, they're very used to people. And as a result, people get the misimpression that they're tame, when in fact they're not. Uh, they remain wild animals and, and will react in ways that just aren't very safe for people to be close to. So we always ask folks to keep, give the horses their distance, stay away, uh, enjoy them from a distance. And you said it would keep about 20 feet away from them. That's right. About a school bunt lens is, is, a good, is a good rule of thumb. Any closer than that, those horses spook, they can move a whole lot quicker than you can. And we have folks that get kicked or bitten every year who venture too close. And obviously don't be feeding them either, any of that. That's right. These horses don't need, don't need human food. There's plenty for them out here to eat. And by, getting, by feeding the horses, you tend to attract them to where the people are. And that includes the sides of the roads. And every year we have at least one horse hit by a car. So word to the wise, everyone should use caution. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is um, the, the foster parent program. Explain to me what this is all about. Well, we have a friends group called the Astig Island Alliance, and they manage the program for us. And for $31, folks can become the official foster parent of the horse of their choice. Uh, it's a great program. The proceeds are used by the National Park to help manage the horses. Uh, that's the funding that supports the contraceptive program that manages we have, that uses we use to manage the, pro, the horse population, as well as educational items. Uh, for example, the movie uh, we show about the horses in a visitor center was funded by the program. And for that money, the folks get a really pretty picture of their horse, uh, a biography of their horse that tells its genealogy and where it hangs out on the marshes or, or in the woods. And then they, in a nice binder, along with a certificate naming them as the official foster parent of that horse. So they really get to feel like they're part of the island here and they have that connection because of the horse that they're a foster parent to. Absolutely. It's, it's not only good for the, for the horses because it helps us manage them, but it's, it does create a personal relationship with these horses and with the park as a whole. And that's a good thing. Now, we talked about those uh, two fillies before. They um, won't be up to be, uh, a, for someone to be a foster parent to them just yet. That's right. I mentioned earlier that uh, all the young of the year, uh, folks have an opportunity to name them. Uh, in December, our friends group will, will hold an eBay auction, charitable auction, and the winners of that auction will get the right to uh, name that horse. And then after that, it'll join the foster horse program. All right, so a lot of good information for people. They can definitely be part of it. And if you come on down to see the horses, of course, just keep your distance. That's it. All right, Carl, thank you very much. Sure. We really appreciate it. Now, for more information on the foster parent program or about the horses here on Assateague Island, you can go to our website, DeltMarvaLife.com, and click on the show tab. So, Jimmy and Lisa, if either one of you were interested in being a foster parent to a horse, 
you can live out your dream now. Time yeah. to do it. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> it really does. I want, I want to awesome. name the horse. That's what I want to do. Have you got a name in mind? Uh, not yet, but not I'll yet. think we'll of something. <laughs> How about Brian? I'll name it Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I you like, like that, that, that a Brian lot? Brian is a very good name. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Brian, thanks. Well, up next on Del Marva Live, Lisa kicked off Del Marva Emerald Society St. Baldrick's fundraiser last month by shaving a head. You remember this? <laughs> oh, I remember that. Del Marva Emerald Society is back with an update on how they did. Plus, we'll hear more about their next fundraiser and how you can help Del Marva Life. Life at its best here on Del Marva.